and everywhere there used to be meat, we had to fill in with clay. A lot of these forms are molded off of a dead deer. So you don't have the muscles bulged out like they should be because they're not, they're not alive. So you have to kind of recreate that on some of them. Depending on who your sculptor is. And that's the difference between a good sculptor on these deer forms and a one that's not so good. Holes. I'll come through with this thing and squeeze them, cover them up. Hair that's around it, I can move the hair with this thing. Inside nostrils, I'll use pink epoxy clay. It turns rock hard. You get it on the skin and it holds it in place. And you can shape it however you want. And it saves me from having to paint the inside of the nose when it's already pink. All I'm doing is rebuilding the inside of the nostril. And bringing all this together, all this, any skin that you can see where it was cut, this will hide all that. All I'm doing here is filling this crack between the eyelid and the eyeball, where the eyelid pulled away a little bit. I'm just gonna shove all this black up in there it's the same color as the eyelid good thing about this epoxy sculpt you can build about any soft tissue that the animal had that may have got cut off when it was being skint i've rebuilt <clears throat> like on a white tail if he's got an open mouth sometimes you have to order the mouthpiece with the teeth and all that usually i make it all out of epoxy sculpt I'll build it myself. It saves us money because them things are expensive and I can build it and it look just like what we have to order. You can make teeth out of this stuff. You can make a tongue, build the inside of the roof of the mouth. I've done enough of them to where I know what the inside of a mouth looks like, especially on a deer. Now, like on something like this, I might have to get a you know a picture or two to look right. at. But that's really all I need is a picture to look at, and I can rebuild it. If 
like your base paint is what I use. It's easier to clean up. It doesn't clog your airbrush like water base does because water base tends to dry inside your airbrush. Another good thing about lacquer paint, you can brush. You get the you can brush the hairs, clean the hairs, but you don't clean the skin. You want the paint to stick to the skin. Hair doesn't lay flat on these animals like most people think. It sticks up. So using this brush here and flat brush and everything, pulling the hair up, making it look fuzzy again. You can kind of see the difference how this hair here is standing up. And this hair here is laying down. It needs to be standing up. Orc's nose is a, a grayish color. It's not black. These horns are probably supposed to be black all over, but they lose a little bit of color when you boil them. So I just did a little airbrushing, put a little color back in them. As long as you get your colors right, it's not that difficult. But yeah, it's hard to to get all the colors. You got to get that soft look. If it's not soft looking, it's not going to look natural. I'm just going to go right around just above that eyelid with this scalpel. And all I do is roll it up like that. Stick it right in that corner and now I have to shape it. And this also helps them see at night. It will control how much light comes into that eye. And I can take that gloss and put layer it over that nictating membrane and pull that all together and make it look wet like it's supposed to. This is the hair flocking tool. This is the velvet base. This is actually for putting velvet on deer antlers, but it can also be for fixing ears that's missing hair. As soon as that dries, then we can put the fiber tack on there. And then we can put the hair on.